Well, welcome everyone to the April 16th public council meeting for the town of Conception Bay South. And we'll start as we always do with our land acknowledgement. The town of Conception Bay South would like to respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We also respectfully acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Natasadin, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatuavut. We strive for respectful partnerships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. We start off with adoption of the meeting agenda for tonight. Someone want to move that? We have it moved by Councillor Moores and we have it seconded by Councillor Hillier. All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Next, we have adoption of the meeting minutes from the last meeting about April 2nd. Someone move that, please. Councillor Connors. And seconded by Councillor Butler. And we're just waiting for people to vote on the last motion. We do this electronically and it's kind of slow at the beginning of the meeting, so we apologize for the delay. There we go. Got it done. Okay. And we had it moved by Councillor Connors and seconded by Councillor Butler, the next one, which is the minutes from April 2nd. So all in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Business arising from the minutes will be dealt with at this meeting and meetings in the future. And next we have Visitors, presentations, and petitions. And tonight, uh, Councillor Rex Hillier is going to bring us up to date on a situation that we understand is affecting many residents in the town at this moment. Councillor Hillier. Uh, yes, Your Worship. As uh, I guess, as most of us are aware now, that uh, we've had a water main break, a major water main break in the uh, Anchorage Road area. Uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll go through the, I guess, the first announcement that we made, and then I've got an update uh, over the last half hour or so. So residents are advised there's a water main break in the area of Anchorage Road. Crews are investigating and will be making emergency repairs over the next several hours. Areas throughout the town may be experiencing low or no water pressure, and we know that that's, that's the case, particularly in the higher uh, higher level areas. I received a text from Tabba Fowler's Road wondering what the problem was with our water. Uh, residents may experience minor water discoloration and pressure fluctu fluctuations after the water has been restored. It is recommended to refrain from doing laundry for one hour after restoring water to avoid the possibility of clothes being stained by discolored water. Uh, we know that there have been some washouts in that in that area of uh, Anchorage Road, and uh, we've got a, a traffic advisory. So it's that motors are asked to please proceed with caution and to expect delays while driving in these areas. Uh, Anchorage Road is closed from Shoot Place to Steep Nap Road, except to emergency vehicles and local traffic. And obviously the town of Conception Bay South apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. So your worship, just got a, an update just to say that uh, staff and equipment is on site, uh, excavation is complete, uh, materials for repairs are on site. However, at this point in time, we've got no set time for completion. Estimated maybe sometime in the early hours of the morning. Uh, also, staff are working on private property damage during daylight hours and will continue to do so over the next couple of days. So like, we had a great surge of water for, in a very quick period of time, and there's there's been some property damage in that area as well. So we're, we've got that in mind. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hillier. And as uh, as we know that these things take uh, many hours to deal with, the, you deal with the excavation, you deal with the repairs, and then there's a process for starting the water back up again. You just don't turn it on the way you go. So it's a bit of a process. So uh, thank you to the crews and uh, Public Works for uh, being on the scene and doing the uh, good work they need to do there. And they'll have a long night tonight. And uh, we and we certainly uh, uh, will let residents know that uh, when it's ready and back on and so forth, but uh, they're working diligently. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, special week here in Conception Bay South, and uh, we're going to acknowledge that with a proclamation uh, right now from Councillor Shelley Moores. Councillor. Thank you, Mayor Bent. A Volunteer Week 2024 proclamation. Whereas the town of Conception Bay South recognizes the enormous contribution that volunteers and community organizations make to the so social, cultural, and economic development of our province, and where Whereas it has been recognized that volunteers in Newfoundland and Labrador have a significant and positive impact on the quality of life for our citizens. And whereas the town of Town of Conception Bay South acknowledges the theme, Every Moment Matters for Volunteer Week 2024, and recognizes the many people who contribute to our town by volunteering. Therefore, we sign this proclamation and declare the period from April 14th to 20th in 2024 to be observed as Volunteer Week in the Town of Conception Bay South this 16th day of April, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moores. And uh, I, I got to say the town of Conception Bay South has uh, so many fantastic volunteers, our service organizations, sporting groups, people that just volunteer to lend a hand or to spend some time with people, an incredible community of volunteers and leaders. And thank you very much to all you do. And I know it's incalculable the number of volunteer hours every year. Uh, but really, uh, uh, you know, if that were to go away, I can't imagine uh, what it would be like because it, it means so much to uh, all of us. So thank you, Councillor Morris. Uh, the next proclamation we have is for National American Sign Language Day. Whereas statistics show that 357,000 Canadians are deaf, while 3.21 million are hard of hearing. 95% of those do not learn sign language. And whereas we all have a part to play in promoting healthy relationships in our schools and workplaces and communities, and whereas building awareness and understanding of deaf and hard of hearing culture and promoting kindness and compassion in our relationships and communities will work towards ending barriers. And whereas together we are working to create opportunities to build capacity to promote components of healthy relationships in our community through awareness, knowledge, and skills building. And whereas through strong community collaboration, we encourage everyone to show their support by recognizing a national American sign language by learning American sign language. Now, therefore, I may Dar Mayor Darren Bent do hereby proclaim Monday, April 15th, which was yesterday, of course, as National American Sign Language Day in the town of Conception Bay South. Thank you. Okay, new business and new business. I'll start to my right with uh, Deputy Mayor Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. So yesterday while I was working, I was listening uh, in the background. I had uh, open line on because sometimes I have on just to see what's happening out in the world. And anyway, the gentleman got on and he uh, may wanted to congratulate uh, the Canadian blind hockey team for winning a gold medal. And I was really, I was really interested in it. Like he started, he said, uh, we have one person from Newfoundland that's on that team. And he spoke on about the tournament. And uh, this is something that's only been, this tournament is international tournaments, only the fifth year that they've had it. This year was in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, this blind hockey, is pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. I listened on as this gentleman spoke about, about this uh, hockey. And he said, all of the players are, are partially sighted. With, they have approximately 10% vision or less. And the goalies ha are, have no vision. And he said, uh, it's pretty inspiring. But this gentleman, his grandson was the uh, young man who was on the team from Newfoundland. And this young man, Brandon Joy, is from Conception Bay South. So anyway, I decided I need to try and find out some information on Brandon Joy. And uh, so I first, of course, took to social media to see if I could find him, and I did. And I looked through his friends on social media and I found someone on, in his friends that I knew and I messaged her. And I said, what can you tell me about Brandon Joy? I said, I'm looking for some information. I know he's from our community. And he just recently 
played in the International Blind Hockey uh, Tournament in Missouri with Team Canada. And uh, she said, within, within a couple of minutes, I didn't get a response. I got a phone call. And it was his grandmother. And it was someone I know pretty well, and I just didn't connect the dots. And anyway, she said, oh, she said, I'm so excited. She said, we're just over the moon. She said, uh, this is Brandon's first year playing on the team. He's 21 years old. He, uh, he used to play hockey. He played hockey growing up, and he played on Queen Elizabeth's team. Brandon had a degenerative eye condition that he's gradually lost his vision and now has less than 10%. He's a third-year university student. And he today came home uh, with the gold medal. So he's, they're all pretty proud and pretty excited. So um, I, I, his grandmother, I said to his grandmother, do you think that Brandon would like to come to Chambers and to council one evening and uh, just come in, bring in his medal and have a conversation with us and talk a little bit about his experience? And she said, oh, absolutely. And she said, can I come too? <laughs> and, I, and I said, of course, grandmothers are always welcome. Any family is welcome. So anyway, uh, so uh, I just want to say on behalf of uh, the town of Conception Bay South, I learned something new today. And on behalf of us all, I want to say congratulations to Team Canada. And uh, there's only two teams in this international tournament. It's Canada and the U.S. Uh, they, do, they say that the uh, uh, currently only Canada and the U.S. have national teams. However, now blind ice hockey programs have started in England, Finland, Sweden, and Russia. So with the hope that this is going to grow. So uh, anyway, congratulations to Brandon Joy, uh, part of uh, Team Canada, uh, blind hockey team, and their gold medal. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Great story, and uh, congratulations to Brandon and his grandmother. And uh, uh, ho hopefully they'll be able to make it into the next meeting or the meeting after, and we can meet them and, and hear about the, that adventure. But it sounds fantastic. Councilor Hillier. Your Worship, just want to pick up on this uh, volunteer week uh, a minute. Uh, you know, if you, you go through, go around the table here, you, know, you go right throughout the room. Uh, every one of us, every one of you have been volunteers at some point in time uh, doing something for somebody else. Uh, Councilor Butler and I share the same decade and have probably been, <laughs> have probably been volunteers what, what, the decade, longest. what decade is that? <laughs> we won't. We'll just say that we share it, Your Worship. Uh, and and sometimes you look over your shoulder to see like we're at this. You look over your shoulder. Who's coming behind you? And I guess when I look over my shoulder, I see Councillor Tilly, Councillor Moores, Councillor Connors, Deputy Mayor, and yourself, Mayor. And then we're into a, a, another cohort that includes. Uh, Councillor Hardy and, and Councillor Barrett. You're probably wondering where I'm going with this, but this past week, uh, the Shore did, Shoreline did an article on Brian and Natasha Bennett and the work that uh, that they do with the Cubs and and talked about volunteerism and so on. I watched Brian grow up through through his high school volleyball and so on. And I guess. It's just just three points to go with that. First of all, it's great to see young people volunteering in our town. Uh, number two, anyone who's interested in volunteering in the town, there's lots of things that they can get involved with. And number three, from a volunteer point of view, our town's in great shape, and Councillor Butler and I have nothing to worry about. Thank you, Wilson. Well. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. It, it reminds me of our last senior social, and we always have uh, volunteers, our seniors group there, you know, so youth uh, advisory council. And I said to uh, our staffer, the group that's down in the back volunteering today with the food, I said, what organization are they with? None. They just signed up to volunteer. They just wanted to come out and help. So, you know, you don't have to be part of an organization. You There's there's opportunities out there to do it, and it's great to see people just reaching out and wanting to be part of something bigger. So you're absolutely right. Councillor Connors, can you defend your generation like Councillor Hillier? I, I, I'm just wondering why you said uh, when Councillor Hillier finished, you remind me of the senior social that we had. Why did you, why would, that, why would he remind you of a senior social? 
<laughs> uh, I just want to build on something that uh, with uh, the deputy mayor was speaking about, uh, Brandon Joy, and talking about volunteers. And because I wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers in uh, in our town as well. But I think Brandon Joy's dad, Steve, I think his name is Steve Joy. He actually, when Brandon started to lose his eyesight here in Conception Bay South, started to put together hockey for the blind. And uh, he actually went out and got equipment for people who never had equipment. And he volunteered and organized it all. And and it only goes to show like it, what his father did to help Brandon get to where he is today. And it's all because he volunteered to do something. So I think that's like a, a big shout out needs to go to uh, Steve, who uh, got this going for him, right? So, uh, yeah, so Volunteer Week, I wanted to do uh, thank you to uh, all of our residents for all the outstanding and significant work that they do in our community. But I also wanted to mention that it's also National Tourism Week. And uh, sometimes we don't re really recognize the amount of tourism that goes on in our community. Like we have our trailways and we have Topsail Beach, we have different uh, things and they attract people to, to our town. Uh, but then there's also like we have state-of-the-art sports facilities, softball, soccer, hockey, that they attract lots of people to our town. We have, now we have arts and cultural events uh, that are going to attract people to our town. So, like, I, I really think that uh, for Conception Bay South and the town has already recognized this, that, like, we're in a really good spot for, for development of our tourism. We do a lot of sport tourism. We do a lot of have people, day destinations where people come to, uh, to stay. So I just want to do a shout out to anyone who uh, who works in a restaurant or works organizing an event or owns a restaurant or business or something that attracts tourists. You are our tourism industry, and I just want to say thank you to to them and wish them all the best for National Tourism Week. And that's it for me. Thank you, Councillor Connors. And of course, uh, with regards to National Tourism Week, and I think we did the proclamation uh, last meeting uh, for this week, but um, you know, we're all ambassadors of our town, every resident here, you know, and every time, you know, we talk about our town and we say things out loud about our town, other people look and they read and they see what you think of it. And it's uh, tremendous. Some of the great things that we see out there and some of the great feedback that we get on our community, but I just say to everybody, everybody is an ambassador and the success of our town is on all of us. And, uh, together, you know, we can, uh, we can make, Conception Bay South as great a place as it possibly can be for all of us, and uh, and I think it's fantastic that uh, that uh, you know the amenities that we have, the things that we keep building on here as this council every year. You know, uh, probably one of the best new, certainly the only new library, but the best library around probably for a long. As you look at the programming they run, you know what an attraction for people to to come out and spend an afternoon at our library, and we welcome them to come to our community and spend some time here and and visit the wonderful things that we have. So, uh, it's just a it's a great uh, it's a great place in the summertime, and of course, I mean, people will say up in the east end of town. There's a couple of them here in the room now that would say, well, the weather is probably not better in CBS, but the people here know that the weather is better in CBS. So, Councillor Morris, I'll leave that uh, with you. It's in your lap now. Thank you, Mayor Bent. Um, I also want to give a shout out to all the volunteers and the weather is definitely better, by the way, because I work in St. John's and I dress for CBS weather and I'm always freezing cold when I get to work. So um, volunteer week, I just want to give a huge shout out. I mean, we are so fortunate in CBS to have such a great volunteer group that we have. Um, it's never hard to find someone to help out, no matter what you're doing, what event you're doing, what organization you're involved with. So just a big shout out to all the volunteers. Um, and just to combine, I guess, the two and the tourism week, I, um, was a volunteer with my son's hockey team this year. And we had our year end party at bunkers in CBS, which is a hidden gym. If and no one has ever been there, it's part of Riverdale, uh, bowling alley and it has three golf simulators and we had our parents and kids there for 
uh, our year-end party and the staff were fantastic and the facility is amazing. So if you haven't checked it out, by all means, go check it out. Um, I will say that I never knew it was there, um, but I'm not a big golfer. But anyway, the boys loved it and it was great. And I can't stress how great the staff were. And to end with that, I just want to give a big congratulations. I'm sure you've all heard or seen on social media all the different congratulations going out to all the different hockey teams of all ages from like under seven up to under 18 on their uh, provincial tournaments. And I wouldn't be able to list them all, but I know CBS had a great showing and all those age groups. So just a huge shout out to everyone um, for their end of the season. And for those who got a medal and those who didn't, I'm sure they had a great time and a successful year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Councillor Butler, you know a thing or two about volunteering, don't you? Oh, that I do. And I still volunteer for other organizations and boards and that. So I continue to, even though I'm way back a few decades, as Councillor Hillier <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I think I'll volunteer till, well, who knows, right? Till, as long as I'm able to. Uh, Andrea, I had, uh, had Brandon on my list to congratulate him also. Um, I saw the news article and I was really fascinated by it. So I just want to extend my congratulations again to Brandon Joy. And I really look forward to meeting him and having him in council chambers. It should be really nice to listen to his story. Yeah. Um, also, uh, CBS Skating Club, we had a number of our uh, young uh, male and female athletes attend the Atlantic Canadian Skating Championships. And I won't name names because there was quite a number of them that made the podium. So they came home with gold, silver, or bronze medals, and there was quite a few of them. So I just want to congratulate all the contingent that traveled to the Atlantic uh, Canadian Skating Championships, and especially to the ones who were on the podium. But you're all winners because you all made it there, and uh, congratulations to you all. And of course, volunteers, yes. CBS, I got to say, I mean, you don't even have to ask, and they're there. You know, I mean, we have our seniors functions, and they're, as the mayor had mentioned, they're not part of anything. They just want to come and help out, you know, which is so wonderful. And that speaks to, uh, you know, not just volunteers, but the community that we have, that people want to be part of it and want to go out and want to help other, other people. So kudos to all the volunteers. Everyone around this room has done it and still doing it, I would say, most of them. And to all the organizations, to all the individuals, to all the volunteer boards, because many of the boards that are, are here, nonprofit char charity organizations, they're all run by volunteers. And I mean, they do a lot of work behind the scenes that people are not aware of at all. So thank you to everybody and uh, enjoy celebrating Volunteer Week and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Butler. Councillor Tilly. Thank you, Worship. Uh, nothing to report from, uh, I guess, the uh, War Three perspective. But uh, as, as Chair of Planning and, and Development, uh, last week, uh, the Planning Department held their annual uh, Builders Forum. So, of course, that's uh, just a showcase with all the, all the, I guess, the different uh, uh, builders and construction folks uh, throughout CBS, and as, as well as um, this year, we invited uh, the real estate people in the real estate market uh, this year we just just talked about different uh, different avenues that the town is is looking at from a, from a building perspective and uh, just wanted to, to send a little shout out we had some uh, several guest speakers there at a, at our breakfast there last uh, Friday morning or last Tuesday morning I believe and just want to give a shout out uh Steve Thorne from Transfer Energy he talked about uh, radon mitigation uh Tanya Rose from Newfoundland Labrador Housing Corporation she gave a little speech on the affordable housing initiatives uh, that are being undertaken by the provincial government. We also had Brian Butt from the uh, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. And of course, he uh, spoke on federal housing assistance initiatives. And, uh, and, and lastly, and of course, not leastly important, uh, Cindy Fowler and Ashley Colley of the Office to Advance Women Apprentices. They, uh, they came in and gave a little presentation on, on what they do and, and what their organization is all about. And, uh, and I think, uh, our director of finance was there and she was, I think she was Johnny on the spot a couple minutes after talking to those folks because uh, they seemed like they have got the, they got a lot of potential for probably some future hiring here for the town of CBS. So uh, it was uh, well attended and uh, we, we certainly hope to have that, uh, have this form on a, on a yearly basis. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tilly. Yes, it was a great event. And, uh, you know, we got to talk about uh, some of the things that we are doing here in the town that will help developers and their efforts to continue to develop the town. And uh, we thank them for the confidence they've shown in our community over the years and the confidence in our 
planning department with uh, so many projects uh, in the hopper right now. So we're in the, I guess we're on the precipice of a of what could be somewhat of a housing boom here in Conception Bay South over the next year or two, and uh, look forward to all of that action. Um, just one thing for me, uh, I just want to say it was a uh, really uh, nice weekend uh, for one uh, special volunteer in Conception Bay South, and uh, she was named uh, the Executive of the Year for the Town of CBS for last year. And on Saturday evening, she was getting two awards and she couldn't be in two places at one time. But Krista Tolbin had previously been announced as NOSA Executive of the Year for the province uh, for soccer uh, based on uh, the work she's done here in Conception Bay South as a volunteer. And uh, she was supposed to be at that awards night uh, Saturday to get it, but she wasn't. She was at Sport NL Awards Banquet and uh, she was where she was a finalist and didn't know if she was going to be named. Well, she was named executive a year by Sport NL. So three awards in the same year for a fantastic volunteer here in Conception Bay South. And uh, congratulations to Krista Tolbin. She's a uh, certainly a leader when it comes to uh, refereeing, uh, where she's uh, she was herself and is now a, uh, a mentor and an organizer for referees. Uh, not the easiest job in uh, sport, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, and uh, also uh, a leader and uh, someone who inspires young women uh, as referees and as leaders within the community. So congratulations to Chris Tobin. Now, I'm going to circle back to Councillor Tilly, who is chair of the Planning and Development Committee, and you have a report with lots of work on it. Thank you, Worship. The following are the recommendations coming from our Planning and Development Committee meeting held on the 8th of April. Uh, item 6A, number 48 Downs Road. Be it so resolved that in accordance with section 10.10 .10 of the town's development regulations, that application number 3772 received on March 28, 2024, proposing to develop a single dwelling at number 48 Downs Road with a building line setback of approximately 45 meters be approved. So moved. We have a seconder. Councillor Connors, discussion? Yes, Your Worship. The... Just waiting to vote. Yes, Your Worship. The applicant is looking to uh, build a new home setback uh, several, or I guess 48 meters from the uh, from the road to take advantage of the view of the, of the pond in the bay on this property. The town does not have any regulations for maximum setbacks, but we need to consider how this new home would align with neighboring properties and based on the size of the property and distance to adjacent homes, the committee has no, uh, has no conservative proposal. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Item 6B, number 174 Garden Road. Be it so resolved that in accordance with council's discretionary authority provided by section 5.3 subsection two of the town's development regulations, Application number 3623 received on January 31st, 2024 for a 9.5 square meter accessory building at number 174 Garden Road be approved. Seconder. Councilor Hilliard, discussion? Yes, Your Worship. Uh, we became aware of a small greenhouse on the property as a result of a recent compliance letter request needed for the sale of said property. Uh, we determined the greenhouse was originally built without a permit and the new owners have since made application and we considered the cumulative lot coverage uh, and feedback from the neighborhood and the greenhouse is for personal use and the committee uh, doesn't have any concerns. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Item 6C, 1659 Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that under the authority of Section 16 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 34, 2024, and the Development Regulations Amendment Number 54, 2024, be adopted. And further, be it so resolved that under authority of Section 19 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Glenn Barnes be that Glenn Barnes be appointed as commissioner to hold a public hearing and complete a report respecting Municipal Plan Amendment Number 34. 2024 and the development regulations amendment number 54, 2024. And further be it so resolved that under for authority of sections 18 and 21 of the urban and rural planning act, 2000 
a public hearing regarding conception based out municipal plan amendment number 33 2024 and development regulations amendment number 53 2024 be held at 7 p.m. on May 8, 2024 at the town hall and that should the town receive no written submissions up to two days prior this prior to the scheduled date, the public hearing will be canceled. So moved. Do we have a seconder? Councilor Butler. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Item 6705 Conception Bay Highway. Uh, your Worship, I have to declare a conflict of interest as uh, under the conflict of interest rules. I have a family member who lives adjacent to this uh, this property and Council Morris is going to bring recognition on my behalf. Um, 60, 705 Conception Bay Highway and 10 to 14 Jeffers Lane. Be it so resolved under authority of section 16 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Municipal Plan Amendment number 35, 2024, and Development Regulations Amendment number 55, 2024, be adopted. And further, be it so resolved that under authority of section 19 of the Ur Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, uh, Stephen Yepchek be appointed as commissioner to hold a public hearing and complete a report respecting Municipal Plan Amendment number 35, 2024, and Development Regulations Amendment number 55, 2024. And further, be it so resolved that under authority of sections 18 and 21 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, a pub public hearing regarding Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment number 35, 2024, and Development Regulations Amendment number 55, 2024, be held at 7 p.m. on May 15th, 2024 at the Town Hall, and that should the town receive no written submissions up to two days before the scheduled date, the public hearing will be canceled. So moved. We have a seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss. Discussion? Uh, yes. Similar to the previous file, this is a proposed extension of commercial zoning to include land behind the North Atlantic Gas Bar in Kellegrews. They're proposing to renovate the building to add a Dairy Queen, and the area to the rear of the building will be used for a new parking lot and the drive through service lane. We did hear from area residents when we sought comments last month. We feel that the concerns we heard can be mitigated. We're scheduling a public hearing with an independent commissioner, and that will provide for independent consideration for any concerns that might remain in the neighborhood with this proposal. Council will have to consider a commissioner's report arising from that public hearing before making a final decision on the rezoning proposal. Any further comments? Good to hear the Dairy Queen's interested in Conception Bay South. That's the only comment. I like Dairy Queen. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's great that we're moving forward with a hearing and getting it to the next level. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Morris. Thank you. I think with the length of that one, Councillor Tilly just didn't want to read it all. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Councillor Tilly, I have to declare a conflict on this one because of a relative doesn't involve the business. Item 6E, 1440 Conception Bay Highway. Be so resolved that under the authority of Section 23 of the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, Conception Bay South Municipal Plan Amendment Number 32, 2024, and development regulations amendment number 51 2024 be approved as adopted so moved do we have a seconder council hillier discussion yes your worship this is the final step for the rezoning for the rezoning request for, for that particular property at present the existing zoning at the property does not reflect the long-standing use of the property just happens to be partial transportation we scheduled public uh, public hearing with an independent commissioner we did not have any submissions, so we're making the final decision to approve the rezone. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, yes, Your Worship, as, as Councillor Tilly indicated, it's a, it's a person's transportation. It's a, a long-standing business here in the town. I, I know when we did our 50th anniversary evening, uh, for our 50th anniversary uh, of the town, uh, they were front and center and played an important part of that evening, and it's great to see them expanding their business such that they need to be able to expand their uh, their property in order to do so. It's uh, great to be able to bring this particular rezoning to an end and let them go ahead and, and, and expand and, and grow. 
Any further comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Item 6F488, Seal Cove Road. Be so resolved that in accordance with section 4.9 of the town's development regulations, application number 3725 received on March 13, 2024 for a home-based business, which is, happens to be an excavating company, located at 488 Seal Cove Road, be deferred, so moved. Is there a seconder? Yes, second. Councillor Moores, discussion? Yes, Your Worship, we are deferring. We're deferring a decision on this application uh, until the applicant can uh, clarify some issues with Crown Lands. Okay, understood. Uh, all in a favor with deferring this recommendation? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And the final one, 6G. Uh, excuse um, excuse me. Um, at the committee meeting, I declared a conflict on an item that was discussed here. Do I? Okay, I just, just wanted to be clear that I, do I have, if I don't have to leave, that'll, okay. No, the, 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 you're, you're acknowledging that the discussion took place. You're not being involved in the discussion. I wasn't part of the discussion. Yes, I left the meeting for the discussion. That's captured in the minutes, so yeah. yeah. No. Okay, all right, okay. just to be sure, thanks. Item 6G is just a, our blanket recommendation for our, well, some of the things that we discussed uh, are just so noticed. Be it so resolved that the discussions and decisions of the April 8, 2024 Planning and Development Committee meeting be accepted as presented. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Moores. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. And that's it from the planning development world. Thank you, Councillor Tilly. Next up, Engineering and Public Works Committee. And who do we have reading that this evening? I believe it's Councillor Hillier. Engineering and Public Works, sir? There we go. There you yes, go. Your Worship, I'm not used to doing one this far down in the uh, agenda, and you caught me off guard. Okay. Uh, item number 7A, be it so resolved that approval be given to dispose of the following vehicles of six light-duty Dodge pickup trucks units, 20, 265, 267, 279, 280, 286, and 411, and one light duty Chevrolet pickup truck, unit 262. So moved. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Moores, discussion? Mr. Worship, some weeks ago we approved to go out and purchase a bunch of pickup trucks. And these are the units that those pickup trucks will be replacing. They're long past their best of life. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Uh, number 7B. Be it so resolved that approval be given to engage Harborside Engineering Consultants and enter into a prime consultant agreement at a cost of $99,903.38, including HST, for Seal Cove River Bridge replacement. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Connors. Discussion. Uh, yes, Your Worship, obviously this will be big news down in Seal Cove. That's a bridge that uh, has been, it was put there as a temporary bridge a long time ago. And uh, I'm not sure which councillor's name should go on it, but I know there have been councillors that have fought the good fight through terms of council to try and replace. In my time, it would have been the Richard Murphy Bridge. Now, I'm not sure who was there before that. Uh, so... Uh, Ken George. Okay, so it would have been the Ken George Bridge. Perhaps we can combine that because I know they're buddies. Uh, so yeah, so this is this is good news for downtown uh, down in uh, Seal Cove. Obviously, this is actually this is the second bridge that we've approved in Seal Cove this year. So transportation in Seal Cove is going to be uh, much improved over the next couple of years, and uh, we're really really excited to be able to start this process and re replace this temporary Bailey Bridge that was put there so so long ago. Yes, and uh, hopefully the new bridge won't make the noises that the old bridge has made for how many years? Anyway, any further comments? I'm sorry that Councillor Hardy is missing this discussion. Well, yes, yeah, uh, perhaps it should be. Well, she's still on council, so it wouldn't be the Councillor Hardy bridge, I suppose. No. Anyway, all in favor? 
Aye. Right. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank and you. your worship, the final blanket statement. Uh, be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions of the Engineering and Public Works Committee held on April 10th, 2024, be accepted as presented and there are five items there that were discussed at that meeting that we bring forward. So moved. Seconder. Deputy Mayor Goss, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Hillier. Next, Recreation and Leisure Services Committee. The chair is uh, Councilor Josh Barrett, but I believe that Councilor Connors is going to speak for Councilor Barrett this evening. Thank you. Yes, Councilor Barrett passed along his regrets. Uh, we had the blanket recommendation this evening, uh, but before I do that, I just want to talk about the uh, our community awards gala, and I'll, uh, we don't have. We don't have all the details of what our gala is going to be right now, but from residents should stay stay tuned because we're going to improve on our uh, awards when we give out our sports awards and our community awards. And this year, we're introducing arts and cultural awards. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, but I just wanted to tell let residents know that nominations are now open. Uh, to recognize the best in CBS with our community awards. Uh, the nomination deadline is May 2nd, and the winners will be announced at our gala event on May 23rd. So some of the awards that uh, people should think about nominating people for, or people should nominate, is Male and Female Junior Athlete of the Year, Senior uh, Male and Female Athlete of the Year, Coach of the Year, Executive of the Year, Team of the Year, as well, we'll be looking for inductees into our Sports Hall of Fame. And for our community awards, which will all be happening on the one night, our Citizen of the Year, our Youth Volunteer of the Year, our Senior Volunteer of the Year, and I think that's a new one that we're adding this year, and our Community Group of the Year. And under Arts and Culture Awards, we're going to have an award for Artist of the Year, Visual and uh, Written Arts, uh, Artists of the Year Performing Arts, and a Rising Star Award. So we have uh, lots of awards that we're giving out to recognize uh, people in our uh, community. Uh, you can go to the CBS website, Conception Based Out website, uh, and get all the detailed information of who you can nominate and hopefully this year we'll get a, an abundance of uh, nominees. So with that being said, the blanket recommendation for our meeting that was held on March 12th, be it so resolved that the recommendations and decisions of the Recreation Leisure Services Committee uh, on April, I'm sorry, April 9th, 2004, be accepted as presented. List of discussion topics attached, so moved. Yes, 2024. What did I say? 2004. 2004. Yeah. You had a you were in the DeLorean tonight. I was gone back to his generation. <laughs> he threw he's thrown off the space he got time control. Yeah. 2024. Yes. All right. Sorry. No worries. Uh do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Butler. Discussion. All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Connors. Next, we have recommendations from Financial and Administrative Services, Deputy Mayor Andrea Goss. Thank you, Mayor Bent. The recommendations of the Financial Finance and Administrative Services Committee, first one nine eight is accounts payable checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given for counts payable checks totaling $848,583.14 as per the attached report, so moved. Seconder. Council Tilly, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Next item, 9B, manual checks. Be it so resolved that approval be given to ratify the payment of manual checks totaling $92,122.32, so moved. Seconder. 
Councilor Morris, discussion? All in favor? Contrary minded? Carried. 9C, capital invoice approval. Be it so resolved that approval be given to pay capital invoices totaling $68,322.75 as per the attached report, so moved. Seconder. Councilor Moore's discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. Tax and other receivables, 9D. Be it so resolved that approval be given to adjust tax and other receivable accounts as follows. And there's one item there for $2,444.91. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Butler, discussion. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Carried. <laughs> okay. Next item, 9E, order for 293 Conception Bay Highway. Be it so resolved that the order issued on April 11th, 2024, under the Urban and Rural Planning Act 2000, the Occupancy and Maintenance Regulations, the Conception Bay South Development Regulations, 2011 to 2021, and the Conception Bay South Fence Regulations, ordering the property owner to install and maintain the temporary guards and permanent guards located at 293 Conception Bay Highway, Conception Bay South, be confirmed. So moved. Seconder. Councilor Morris, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? And the last item, oh no, not the last, second last, 9F, uh, Recreational Vehicle Regulations. Be it so resolved that the Recreational Vehicle Regulations be adopted as presented, so moved. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Connors, discussion. Uh, Mayor, these are the regulations that we have uh, worked our way through for our ATV pilot project. Uh, these are regulations for our, our town. These are going to be, these FCRs are approved here this evening. They will be sent to uh, provincial government for approval, at which time then, when they come back, then we will uh, move forward with the next steps. Any other discussion? I'm sure there's going to be discussion. No discussion? I'm just pleased that we're moving mm -hmm. forward with this. I'm glad to... Uh... See this recommendation come forward tonight. There's been lots of discussion around this around the table with council and these regulations. They, uh, you know, they cover what qualifies as an ATV ATV vehicle and what doesn't. You know, things like enforcement, rules of operation, times of operation, all those things are covered. That the goal of the regulations is is for is for safety for those for ATV users to use their vehicles in a safe manner under and these regulations are to govern that. Councilor Tilly. Yes, Your Worship, I, I just want to expand on what the Deputy Mayor said. You know, uh, we put these regulations in place for a reason. You know, that's to, to try and protect uh, all the residents of Concession Bay South. Uh, I, I thought long and hard about this, uh, you know, uh, you know, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, did, did, did we ever think we'd, had, we'd see all three vehicles uh, operating on streets and CBS? Probably not, right? But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, you know, I guess just see what the pilot project brings. Uh, hopefully, it'll be more more good than, than not so good. Um, probably one of the key things that I'd probably like to see is that the uh, the law abiding people who are going to follow these rules and regulations they might be able to take the not so good people under their wings and try and straighten them out and say, guys, you know, you're you're probably you know you could make this bad for us or whatever. But uh, you know that's that's one of my hopes out of this. And and, and again, you know. Folks, this is a pilot project. You know, uh, you know, we need some data just to say, you know, is this a good thing or is this not a good thing for a conception based salad? And uh, you know, um, we're we're willing to take take that chance for a few months and uh, see where we go from there. Any other comments? Um, I'll just take a moment if I could. Um, we had two public consultations uh, to uh, go over. Uh, these proposed regulations, and uh, and we heard uh, uh, loud and clear from uh, a number of residents. We took uh, submissions, and those submissions uh, uh, were sent around and shared with all of council for the opportunity to review. 
Um, one thing I will say is that we're not going down a path that has not been gone down by other municipalities. This is, we're not striking out and doing something completely different or new. We're we're following what appears to be and seems to be by the information we've been provided as a trend, not only across our province, but across the country, really. Um, and uh, we have many, many ATV users in our town who have been asking for, uh, you know, some, I guess, opening of, of rules to allow for them to uh, enjoy their pastime uh, easier. Uh, but this all started in 2022 with the provincial government uh, when they brought in a new Off-Road Vehicles Act. And in that act, they allowed ATV users properly licensed, properly insured, properly outfitted, and so forth, to ride on roadways in our province as long as they were within one kilometer of an of a accepted or approved trailway to use ATVs. And that's where it started. And uh, so I think most of us have probably seen a little more ATV use on the roads over the past couple of years than we had ever seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, we felt that uh, if we took a look at a couple of areas to begin with as a pilot project to allow local local ATV users in local areas that would be outside of that one kilometer to be given the access to those approved trails as outlined by the province, uh, that access without having to load up their vehicle, take it to within a kilometer somewhere and unload it and go on and use the the trails in the backwoods and so forth that are there and they've been using traditionally for years. Uh, so we've decided to do that uh, in two areas as a pilot project. We're going to monitor it. We're going to listen to the feedback of the local residents in those areas and other areas that are going to see more ATV use regardless uh, because of this, because one of the things that we've done during our public consultations and of course through our, our information uh, sharing is that we have, inform people of rules that maybe they didn't know were in existence before. Uh, you know, and one of the things that uh, I had to consider uh, along with the concerns of residents is, uh, you know, uh, the big concern of the people doing things illegal, uh, using ATVs uh, in unsafe manner, uh, speeding, uh, uh, dirt bikes and all these things. But the people that are, are doing things illegally now, are not the people we're aiming at for these rules. These rules are opened up for responsible, and we know that uh, the vast, vast majority of ATV users are responsible, uh, contributing members of our, our town, and we didn't want to uh, hold them back if there was no real reason to do so. You, you don't want to punish the innocent for the actions of, the, uh, of, of those who would be the guilty. So we are gonna go down this road literally, uh, with ATV use on a couple of streets and areas, uh, um, cul-de-sacs and so forth off of those areas, and to see how it goes. And it's in the hands of the ATV users in those areas and the people that avail of those streets to let us know if they can manage it properly, follow the rules, and not cause grief and disruption and safety concerns beyond what are already there now for the residents in those areas. And if that's what happens, then I look forward to this process. If it's not what happens, council has the right and the ability to pull back on this pilot project at any time. And I hope that's not what happens. And I don't believe that's what's gonna happen, but uh, it is up to the people that use this as what it is. And I think most all ATV users that we spoke to through this process understand that this is a privilege, not a right. And that people here around this table have the right to revoke that if it isn't working at all. And uh, as we go forward, we'll see how it works and we'll monitor it. Now, I know, want to note a couple other things I think are important to this, is that through this consultation, the ATV Riders Group, I can't remember the actual name of the group now, but have committed to increase or, or I guess invoke increase their presence in schools in the town to uh, share education with uh, the young people on the proper use, the rules and so forth to educate them. 
And also uh, that we will be alerting the RNC through this process of what's happening. And uh, we have met with the chief and their deputies uh, uh, some months ago and talked about this and what we were thinking about doing. And they, of course, of course told us that they hadn't seen any issues in other places that they had patrolled uh, uh, above the norm. So, uh, but they are aware and they'll be made well aware of what's happening and we'll be asking them to keep an eye in these areas specifically because of what we are doing. Because to be honest with you, I think we all want it to succeed, but it has to succeed on its own. We can't make it succeed. So, that's all I wanted to say about it. Uh, thank you. And uh, Councilor Morris, I think you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, just so everyone knows, these aren't in effect yet. It has to go to the provincial government. There's still a process left exactly. before people are allowed to ride their ATV. So it's yeah. not in effect yet. But I just wanted to point out and just repeat some of the things Mayor Bent said. I was at the first info session, and I just want residents to know that we, those, I guess, that aren't in favor of it, I, we really did hear your safety concerns. And I really think there's a good handle on your concerns in the regulations that have been developed. And, you know, we want what's best and what's safest for all of our residents too. And that was heard. So I, I think if everyone follows the rules, it should go well. And like it, like everyone has said here, it is a pilot project. And if it doesn't work out, then it'll stop. But hopefully it will work and everyone follow the rules and we can have a safe environment in our community for ATV riders. Thank I you. just want to add that these regulations don't apply to dirt bikes. There is no roads that dirt bikes, two-wheel dirt bikes, are permitted on under our regulations or the provincial regulations. Uh, these are three- or four-wheeled recreational vehicles, and they must have insurance, you must have a license, and you must wear a helmet, and you must abide by the rules. And, you know, so we're just uh, hoping that, uh, you know, when this, when we start this pilot project when we're ready to uh open this up we just hope that uh it is a is a, a you know enjoyable uh experience and uh safe and enjoyable experience and if it's not we'll just pull the plug that, that's it um and, and if i could and i just want to i want to be clear and i'm i'm saying this uh, because i know we have the media in the back of the room uh so we just want to be clear that this has to go to the province. The province has to sign off on it. And then it comes back to us. And it's not in effect until that happens, even though in the legislation, uh, we outline that this is from May 15th to October 15th or November? November. November 15th? November 15th. Yeah, so it's May 15th to November 15th. But this year... It's actually whenever we get the legislation back yeah. from the province, it'll start. That may be by May 15th, won't be any earlier, or after May 15th. So it could be later on. But just so that everyone knows, this is not in effect as of tonight. We are approving, we are voting to approve to send it to the province and they have to sign off on it because it has to co it has to work with their regulations. It can't uh, go against those. Any other comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Carried. Thank you. The last one is 9G, and that's the department report. Be it so resolved that the decisions and recommendations of the Financial and Administrative Services Committee meeting held on Monday, April 8th, be accepted as presented. The following items were discussed. Capital projects update, enforcement and humane services stats, fire department stats, communication social media stats, Fire Department year in review. So moved. Seconder. Councillor Moores. Discussion? I have one thing I want to say, uh, because uh, this is where we talked about the fire department. Mm -hmm. And one thing I probably should have said earlier, but I'm going to say it now anyway, because uh, it's under this committee. This Saturday. But the Conception Bay South Fire Department is going to be holding the Stuff the Stop Truck the event. Truck. And it's going to be this weekend, Sunday, the 21st at Station 1. It's going to be from noon to three, and we encourage residents to drop off donations for the CBS Paradise Community Food Bank at Station One here in Conception Bay South during that time. And uh, there's a number of items in high demand, things like cake mixes, powdered juices, canned pasta, tin tomatoes, cookies, cream soup, of course, non-perishables of all kinds will be welcome. And of course, uh, this time of year, you don't hear too many fundraisers or events in support of the food bank. So it's great. Thank you, uh, Chief Heffernan, you and the crew out there. I was out last year. 
A uh, fantastic number of firefighters out there welcoming residents, dropping off foods, great an event. And I think we're probably, are, is, are we the only ones doing it this weekend or this is new, right? Spring? Yes, as far as we're tracking your event. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the spring version of the uh, Stuff the Truck. We'll probably do another one later on, I think, as well. So it's great. Thank you very much for that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Contrary-minded? Carried. Thank That's you. That's it for my reports. Long report. That's it. Good report. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, next, we have recommendations of the Economic Development and Tourism Committee. And Chair uh, Butler, there was no meeting. So did you have anything to report otherwise? No. Okay. No, I don't. Thank you, uh, Councillor Butler. Other committee reports. I know we have some people that sit on other committees. Is there anyone that? Yes, I uh, can. Your Worship uh, sat in on the uh, Tourism Committee meeting last week. And uh, I think there were eight or ten of us there uh, from various areas of tourism business people, people from government, people from other areas of uh, of the industry. Some of the things we talked about, we talked about uh, Vision 2026. Uh, we talked about Newfoundland Labrador listings for businesses in their in their tourism uh, package. Uh, we talked about Saber CBS. And I know we've got a uh, a committee that's that's looking after that, and I'm looking forward to that to being a, a first class event coming uh, coming in the fall. Um, two areas we talked about, I guess we, we, we worked on one was on our, our tourism map, which we see around at, uh, various businesses and so on, updating that. It's interesting to see, uh, how, mo how many businesses have changed just in one year, businesses coming out, business going back on, on that map. The other thing we talked about, uh, were our itineraries. And I'm not sure how many people are aware of it, but we have identified and created um, eight in all itineraries of Conception Bay South. Uh, we've been promoting ourselves as the, the day trip destination from St. John's. And what we've done, or I'm saying we as the greater we, because I wasn't involved in it, but what's been done is that we've got four half day itineraries three full-day itineraries, and one two-day itinerary. And it's interesting, I've, I've done a little bit of work in tourism, and, and the one of the gentlemen that I work for when we when we have tourists around uh, used to say, you know, Rex, I wonder what they see that we don't see, all right, in terms of the oohs and the ahs that they were giving for what they saw around Newfoundland. And it's the same way when you look at these itineraries in Conception Bay South and things that people can do here on a half-day basis, uh, on a full-day basis, or in, in fact, on a, on a, on a two-day basis. And uh, those are online. Anybody want to uh, want to have a look at them? But certainly, uh, We've certainly got uh, a rich tourist package for, uh, for those that come this way. And that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Yeah, I was on the uh, committee uh, for a couple of years for sure. And uh, some of the uh, tour operators that were doing day trips and uh, for people coming in, flying in, spending two or three days at something in St. John's and then but wanted to get out and have a look, would either go through CBS or would go to, you know, or, or on their way somewhere else. And uh, the things that we have to offer, you know, update all the time. They, they change and there's new things and Wonderful things depends on what you're looking for. If your family, if your business, you know what have you. So it's it's great and it's always uh, good. I encourage all of our businesses to sign up for the provincial government tourism directory because that's how people find you. Well, you're going to a different province. What do you got? They have directories that'll just list it right off. Things to do, things near you, as it is on Google. Um, any other reports this evening from anyone? No. Okay. Well, that's good. Oh, yep. Sorry, Deputy Mayor. He never sees me. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to move you over here for a few meetings, see how that works out better. Uh, last Thursday, uh, I had a, meet a meeting with our youth advisory uh, committee. And uh, anyway, we were talking to their, about some things they'd like to do spring, summer coming up. So this is our volunteer group. And, uh, you know, being volunteer week, I'd like to just uh, say thank you to them. They're a great bunch of young people. They they range in uh, from, uh, you know, from grade nine students to university students. And uh, we got together on Thursday and talked about some things they'd like to do. They uh, 
uh, have some ideas for some youth events for for the Swarry, and they're looking at a fundraiser. And anyway, they have some great ideas. They show up for like you never know where you're going to see them. They've helped. They help out with our Christmas events. They help out with Winterfest and pancake breakfast. And they're just as they're a small but mighty group. And uh, I want just want to say thank you to them and and congratulate them. Just volunteer week, and they'll have some great ideas now for the upcoming uh, spring and summer. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anyone else? Okay, well, that's it for this evening. So we'll be back again on uh, May 7th for the next uh, public council meeting. I won't be here for that one. Um, I believe, Councillor Tilly, you are with me, so you won't be here either. Um, but uh, we look forward to Deputy Mayor. You'll have, have the chair and the gavel and uh, run a tight ship, as you always do. So thank you for that. And uh, I'll call for a motion of adjournment. Councillor Tilly, seconded by Councillor Hillier. All in favor? Contrary-minded. Carried. Thank you. Good night.